Tech, its aerospace program, how they're funding it straight ahead. And the Culinary Union still hasn't reached a deal with casinos to renew their contracts when they could go on strike straight ahead. Today's high hit 74 degrees. That was just three degrees shy of the all time record high. We're back in the 70s again tomorrow. Tell you about it in big weather. This is Fox 11 News at 10. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Andrea Esparza. Well, Sparks police are asking for the public's help in locating a missing 15 year old. Carly Pacheco was last seen on October 28th with a friend in East Sparks in a black 2006 four door Volvo. Pacheco, who prefers to go by Max, is five foot one, weighs roughly 185 pounds and has brown hair and brown eyes. This is a photo of Max and anyone with information on their whereabouts is asked to call Sparks police at 775-353-2241. And McQueen High School was placed on a code yellow this morning after school authorities became aware of a bomb threat at around 1020 AM. In a letter sent to McQueen families, Principal Holbrook stated in part, we put the school under a precautionary code yellow, secured campus, while school police and administration cleared the building and confirmed no threat was present. The code yellow was lifted as soon as school police cleared it and school went forward as normal for the remainder of the day. Well, UNR hopes to graduate the first aerospace engineering students in about four years. This as the big donation to launch the department was announced just this week. The $36 million gift is the largest for an academic program in UNR's history. The department seeks to train the next generation of engineers to work in local companies such as Sierra Nevada Corporation and even Tesla. The program will be the first in Nevada to offer bachelor's degrees as well as doctorates and university officials can't wait to get it up and running. I think the joy that comes with it is, is the opportunity for, this, for the students um, and, and building a program that students are interested in, but I think also can help change the um, innovation landscape in the economy for Northern Nevada. Well, the $5 million of the donation will be set aside for renovations at the Fleischmann Planetarium. They plan to replace the projections within the dome with a state-of-the-art LED technology. And when it comes to schooling, students and families are invited to attend a college fair hosted by the Washoe County School District. Families will get a chance to speak with more than 50 colleges and universities from two and four year universities. Several of those schools include the University of Portland, Wyoming, and even Washington State University. It is happening this Sunday from noon until four at the Reno Sparks Convention Center. Well, it was a cloudy but warm day today. Let's check in now with Chief Meteorologist Matt Monroe. It yeah. was nice to walk out without a jacket. I was in Canada. <laughs> this is a nice warm welcome back, Matt. Yeah, you're day. Welcome back, Andre. You're not in old Canada anymore, that's for sure. 74 degrees today, the record 77. So we just missed out on that, but the average high is usually around 63. So we're way ahead of schedule there. Now, tonight we've got some clouds that actually insulates us. So lows not quite as nippy down to the low to mid 40s. And then tomorrow we're right back at it in those lower 70s. That's going to feel good yet again. Outside here tonight, we're at 59 degrees in Reno, Carson City, Truckee, mid 40s, 50 in Fallon, 52 out across Winnemucca. Lots of 40s and 50s out there right now across the board. And eventually we'll chill you down to about 42 here in town. So weather headlines mild and dry right through the weekend. The winds will kick up with a chance of rain early next week. We'll take you through all that in big weather. Andrea. All right, thanks, Matt. Well, to help keep everyone safe, the Reno Fire Department is partnering with the American Red Cross to hand out free smoke alarms. Well, if you'd like one, all you have to do is contact the American Red Cross at the number you see there at the very bottom of your screen. In addition to installing the alarms for you, they'll actually help put together an evacuation plan for your personal home. The Reno Fire Department is also asking people to test your smoke alarms and your carbon monoxide detectors this weekend. 
Well, a newly filed complaint by the Nevada Attorney General's Office is looking to oust the sheriff in Esmeralda County. In the lawsuit by AG Aaron Ford, it states that Sheriff Nicholas Durando's past domestic violence conviction actually disqualifies him from serving. Records show he was ruled guilty for a 2007 misdemeanor domestic battery charge. And what's shedding light on this particular issue is earlier this year, a newly signed law state, anyone who's been convicted of domestic violence cannot be qualified to serve as a peace officer. The Esmeralda County Sheriff's Office hasn't commented yet, but Durando was elected last year in November. Well, Matt charged with coordinating the 1996 murder of rap icon Tupac Shakur pleaded not guilty in court today. Six-year-old Dwayne Keith D. Davis is the only person ever charged in the crime in Tupac's murder. He's also the only person who's still alive who claims he was in the vehicle which shots were fired from. Officials say the former Southern Californian street gang leader is accused of giving the gun to the person who shot Tupac and then implicating himself in interviews and even his own memoir. He's being held without bail and is due in court again on Tuesday. Well, thousands of Las Vegas casino workers plan to strike if new union contracts are not agreed upon by next Friday. Numbers show this strike could disrupt 18 casinos, including the Bellagio, Caesars and the MGM. The union's deadline comes after another round of unsuccessful negotiations with casinos. The deadline for this is 5 a.m. November 10th. And the Culinary Workers Union, which represents about 60,000 workers in the state, with 35,000 of those members whose contract expired earlier this year, have also said to go on strike. Well, staying in Nevada, Secretary of State Francisco Aguilar announces an increase in active registered votes. Aguilar reported over 10,000 more people registered during the month of October. This brings the total to over 1.9 million active registered voters. Nonpartisan voters increased the most, followed by Democrats, Republicans, Independents, then Libertarians. To register to vote, head over to registertovote.nv.gov. Well, Senator Catherine Cortez Masto is supporting a bill that helps several Nevadan groups, including veterans and even tribal communities. Some part of the Nevada or Indian Community Development Block Grant program will help tackle homelessness with Native American veterans. It will also help improve military readiness and upgrade military housing. The senator is also pushing for support of this bill, saying, quote, I urge my colleagues in the House to stop playing games with the lives of hardworking Nevadans and get to work passing these critical funding bills. Well, Cortez Masso also highlighted the bill funding will help with agriculture research and even food supply protection. Well, the Reno Wind Symphony is putting on a free concert for veterans and active military members this Sunday. It's called Harmony and Valor, and it features a variety of tunes to celebrate our nation's heroes and presentations commemorating the 60th anniversary of the Battle of Midway. General admission for those are for veterans. Our active military members is $15 or $5 for seniors 65 and up. The event starts at 3 p.m. at the Nightingale Concert Hall located on the UNR campus. Well, for years, South Reno residents have had wild horses venture off into the yards and neighborhoods and even busy streets, causing major safety concerns for residents and the animals. The city was awarded half a million dollars from the Federal American Rescue Plan Act Fund to fully fence the Virginia Range. They're also working with the Nevada Department of Transportation to build cross guards so horses don't run directly into traffic. And as of March, the city implemented lowering nighttime speed limits between Gregor Grade and South Meadows Parkway in efforts to help prevent horses from being hit and of course to keep drivers safe. People live at Tahoe and they have bears. Some people live up by Verdi and they have uh, mule deer. We happen to live down here in South Reno and we have horses and so each of these animals calls for a different solution and a different approach where we are uh, leaning in asking our community please help us drive slow be safe Keep fences closed, keep gates closed. Well, right now the city says a fencing program is set to begin next spring and hopefully will be finished by 2026. 
The Lake Tahoe National Forest will begin issuing Christmas tree permits all starting next week. Permits are $10 with a limit of two permits per household. The permit allows you to chop your very own tree and beginning November 7th, running through December 31st, you can do that. To actually get your permits, you can do it online at recreation.gov. And there's also a limited number available in person at the district offices and fourth grade students with an every kid outdoor pass are eligible to get a free permit. And taking you to a traffic alert for you, and if you're driving out there tonight, this is a live look at I-580 near DeMonte Ranch exit, and there is some minor overnight road work on the southbound ramp causing slowdowns on I-580, and uh, estimates the work will be completed by 6 o'clock in the morning. Well, coming up, the House of Representatives has passed an Israeli aid bill. Why Democrats are objecting that straight ahead. And Adam Schiff run for Senate in jeopardy. The recent discovery by CNN calling his residency into question coming up. All right, today was a little on the cloudy side, but certainly on the warm side. We're going to hang on to the warm temps tomorrow, and a lot of sunshine comes back to town. Have the entire forecast next in big weather. Hello and welcome back. Well, classes at Cornell University are being canceled tomorrow amid stress on campus following anti-Semitic death threats. According to New York prosecutors, a junior at the university was arrested and charged over online posts which threatens to harm or kill Cornell's Jewish students. CNN reports as a result, Cornell will observe a community day. Cornell is just one of several universities in turmoil as students make impassioned stances over Israel's response to Hamas's deadly invasion. Well, the House approves a measure to provide $14.5 billion in military aid for Israel in its war against Hamas. The legislation passed on mostly party lines is expected to face opposition in the Senate. Democrats object the bill because it does not include additional security assistance for Ukraine. They also take issue with the measures requiring the emergency aid to be offset by funding cuts to the IRS. President Biden has said he would veto this bill. Well, Ukraine's commander-in-chief concedes, meaning the war is in a standstill. General Zelensky tells the economists that the fight has reached an impasse. Ukraine says they need long-range weapons which are slow to materialize. U.S. lawmakers are working to push out more aid, although Republicans want that paired with the border funding, which could slow things down even further. We, we have obligations. We have things that we can and should do around the world, but we have to take care of our own house first. And as long as the border is wide open, we're opening ourselves up for, for great threat. Well, GOP leadership is making the case that aid to Israel should go first. That also could get held up as Republicans want to slash IRS funding in exchange for assistance to Israel amid its response to Hamas's attack just last month. Well, the U.S. is doing too much for Ukraine. That's what a growing number of Americans are now saying. According to a new Gallup poll, 41 percent now hold this view. That's up nearly 20 percentage points since last August. 33 percent say the U.S. is actually doing the right thing with the right amount of funds. And that's done with 43 percent in June. Much of the change is driven by Republicans, as 60 percent of them now believe we need to do less, which is up from 43 percent since last August. This poll comes as President Biden is pushing for more Ukrainian aid. We'll break from politics and bring you to northern Nevada weather. Let's check in now with Chief Meteorologist Matt Monroe. Yeah. Real warm out there tonight. Matt didn't even bring a jacket. It was pretty amazing. How about 74 degrees early on today, Andrea? That was just three degrees shy of the all-time record. So we saw a lot of clouds spilling over today, but it didn't really hold down the temperatures very much at all. All right, we're chiming in. This is from Christopher Foreman. This is what his specialty is. Beautiful skyline canyon sunrises, and this is a good one from early on today. Look at the purple mountain mountains right there and lots of yellows and oranges and pinks filling the sky. Even a little fall foliage kind of hanging right down there into the picture. Christopher, great job as always, my friend. Mynews4.com slash chime in. Tonight, it's actually cloudy, but we're dry. 59 degrees, down about 15 degrees from our daytime high. Winds are almost calm. They're easterly at three miles per hour. Low humidity and the pressure is down just a smidge to 31.7. So after midnight tonight, the cloud cover actually insulates us quite 
quite a bit. Lows here in Reno, not in the 20s or 30s, but actually in the lower 40s, and that's about 10 degrees above average. South Lake Tahoe, this model's putting it at about 40. I think we do go down to between about 35 and 38 degrees in South Lake, much like Tahoe City. 33 tonight in Truckee, and then out to the east, no more 20s and 30s for the most part. It's 30s and lots of 40s in Gerlach, Fernley. Lovelock down to 34, middle 40s in Hawthorne and Winnemucca. So we have a little cold front coming on through. It's not really going to cool us down very much tomorrow, but it is putting in a lot of cloud cover. And at first glance, it looks like it's actually raining out across the Washoe Valley, down across the Eagle Valley and the Carson Valley. Just about all of this is Virgin. Some upper level precip evaporating long before it reaches the ground. There's more of that out across Winnemucca, eastern Humboldt County, and now leaving Churchill County as well. So the front is coming on through. Tomorrow we actually rid ourselves of the clouds. So there's tomorrow's weather, a nice break in the action, and then there's another system of low pressure back behind that. There's the swirl and these clouds, although they're dry, they'll come in here on Saturday and Sunday. Back behind that low, there's another one right here. Just off to the south, the Aleutian Islands, that comes in Monday and Tuesday, and that will cool things down and offer up about a 30% chance of widely scattered showers. So the clouds are out there tonight. There's a nice break tomorrow, sunny, warm, dry, and then here we go for the weekend. Winds will come out of the southwest about 15 to 25 miles per hour, but we will keep it dry, partly cloudy on Saturday. We do that forecast again on Sunday, and then a small chance of rain comes back into town overnight Monday nine to early Tuesday morning. Some snow showers are possible, probably up above 7,000 feet, and then the whole system kind of leaves on Tuesday. Wednesday is looking gorgeous. So enjoy the lower 70s tomorrow and Saturday, upper 60s on Sunday, and then back in the 50s there Monday and Tuesday will take you actually below average for the first couple days of next week. Now, of course, Nevada, big game on Saturday going for win number three against Hawaii. We'll fall back Saturday night, Sunday morning, 2 a.m. becomes 1 a.m., and then a chance of rain on Monday and Tuesday. All right, thank you so much, Matt. Well, Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff, who's running for a California Senate seat, apparently claims two primary residences. According to a CNN review of mortgage records, Schiff also claimed a residence in Maryland for over a decade. And at the same time, he's taken homeowner tax exemptions on a house in California. The representative is in a competitive California primary Senate. His dual residency claims could present problems for him as he moves forward. A spokesperson for Schiff's campaign affirms his primary residence is in California and that his family moved to D.C. to be closer together. Well, impeachment is back on the table after two weeks of working without a leader. House Republicans are now tackling the Biden impeachment inquiry. Congressman James Comer, who's leading the inquiry, is signaling a final phase of his investigation. And GOP leadership is predicting we will now soon know the outcome. Chairman Comer, Chairman Jordan and Judiciary, uh, Chairman Smith and Ways and Means, they've done an extraordinary job, very methodically. And I, I would say outside the scope of politics, they've been taking in the evidence as it goes. Wilcoma well, recently released records of payments from the president's brother, James, to Joe Biden when he was not in office. That in and of itself is not evidence of any wrongdoing. It comes down to it. Impeachment will require a simple majority vote, a potentially tall order for Republicans who hold a slim house majority. Well, federal agents raided the home of a top fundraiser for New York City Mayor's Eric Adams. According to the Associated Press, agents searched the Brooklyn home of Rihanna Suggs. The 25-year-old is actually a campaign consultant for Adams and has worked for him since 2017. An attorney for Adams' campaign says the mayor was not contacted as part of the inquiry, adding, quote, the campaign has always held itself to the highest standards. Well, earlier today, Adams canceled a series of meetings in Washington in order to return back to New York. And Target is laying out some holiday cheer how you can get a low-cost Thanksgiving meal when we come back.
Hello and welcome back. Taking you to this developing story, Sam Bankman Freed has been found guilty on all seven fraud charges. He is the founder of the failed crypto exchange called FTX, and prosecutors say he stole billions of dollars from customers and shareholders in order to support his lavish lifestyle while also making some risky investments. It's considered one of the biggest financial fraud schemes on record. The verdict caps a months long trial during which the defendant himself admitted to making quote mistakes. A sentencing date has been set for March 28th and the 31 year old faces a possibility of life behind bars. Well, Ford is recalling close to 200,000 Mustangs. The recall is due to a brake fluid level sensor. Well, it may not activate the usual visual warnings that indicate when a brake fluid is low. The issue impacts 2020 through 2023 models. Ford says the fix is a software update that can actually be performed at dealerships at no cost to owners. The company plans to start sending letters to affected owners December 4th. Well, Ford is not the only car company with problems right now. Toyota is recalling more than 1.8 million of their RAV4 vehicles. The recalls for a fire risk caused by replacement batteries. Toyota will reach out to affected owners next month. And to find out if your vehicle is subject to a recall, you can head over to nhtsa.gov recalls anytime and just plug in your vehicle's identification number to see if it's actually been affected by any safety recalls in the past 15 years. You can also get recall alerts by downloading NHTSA's free safe car app in the Apple or Android app stores. Well, some retailers are giving shoppers a reason to be thankful this Thanksgiving. They are offering a cheaper holiday meal kit like Target, which is selling a full feast for only $25. The meal serves four and includes a 10 pound turkey, potatoes, green beans, cranberry sauce, stuffing, and even gravy. Customers can find that deal on Target's website. And it isn't time for Christmas, but in California, it's already picking out those trees when you can see the Grove Mall light up this Christmas tree when we come back. And before we go, here's a look outside from our GSR Skycam. Matt Monroe will have a final look at your forecast after the break. You can also find our latest news headlines on our website, foxreno.com. Don't like the web? How about social media? Try Facebook, X, and Instagram. Stick with us because we will be right back. After this, for another installment of NSN Tonight, lots to get to, including the latest edition of Circa Best Bets. Plus, we got to go back to last night, our first Lawler look at the 23-24 men's basketball team. Also have some reaction from Coach Steve Offord of the Wolfpack. His mentor is college basketball coach Bobby Knight, died yesterday at age 83. And Coach Offord talks about the impact that Coach Knight had on his life and really what he's been able to accomplish in his career. Reaction from Coach Offord and other former Wolfpack coaches on the passing of Coach Knight and a whole lot more. It's right after this on NSN tonight. Back to you guys. All right, thanks, NSN and crew. Well, Thanksgiving isn't here yet, but it's coming soon. But there's a big sign of Christmas that arrived in Los Angeles today. How about this? A 100-foot white fir tree was placed at the Groves Mall Outdoor Park. The nearly 80-year-old tree was handpicked from Northern California's Mount Shasta's region after was nearing the end of its woodland life cycle. Ten new white fir trees will be planted in Mount Shasta in its place. Matt. That is impressive to say the least. Now, the Christmas tree is going to be decorated with 15,000 sparkling lights and 10,000 ornaments. The lighting ceremony, which includes musical performances, is set for November 13th. Now, once the holiday season wraps up, the tree's branches will be recycled as mulch and firewood. And that's going to be a lot of mulch and a lot of firewood. How sustainable. Oof. They already planted 10 more. I mean, yeah. I feel bad that we cut it down, but at that's least we're giving back. not far from here, too. Mount Shasta. I it's know. only a short four well, or five can, hour drive away. You can cut your own Christmas trees in Tahoe. That's true. The I permits are going that. out, too. Oh, $10. There you go. I know. It doesn't feel <laughs> anything close to Christmas. Look at this temperature. No, here, this is super here. Look at this. Sunny tomorrow, 72 degrees. The average high is about 63. Today we did 74, so it's going to be even more sunny tomorrow and just a couple degrees cooler. Saturday, Sunday, the winds kick up. Temperature Temperatures in the 60s by Sunday. Go pack on Saturday. Next chance of rain on Monday. I think I might go to the UNR game. You should. It Maybe looks warm enough for me to sit out in the bleachers. Yeah, I'll do it. We'll see you next time.